Hello YouTube! Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to consider the limits of multivariate functions. Okay, so I hope you've had a great New Year's. I had a good time. Uh, I've got some friends visiting, so um, it's been a little while since we made a video. But we are back, so let's get into it. Okay, so um, first of all let's introduce you to um, this little booklet that I have basically finished preparing. So it's 131 pages. It's called A YouTube Course in Mathematica by me. Uh, the first six chapters of this are just summaries of uh, courses that you might study in a first year mathematics course in a university or college. Now those could in, uh, include introductory mathematics, so I've got a section here, preparatory mathematics, right, which gives you some uh, basic ideas or a refresher on various concepts uh, that you might be learning. Now, it's not intended to replace a course or to replace a book. It's just a booklet, a booklet of little reminders. Okay, so this is the first chapter, and then the second chapter is linear algebra vectors and so on. The third chapter is calculus of one variable and then we have calculus of two variables. Uh, a chapter on ODEs, just basic ODEs. And a chapter on discrete mathematics, logic, um, sets, congruences, basic number theory and so on. And then uh, the set of exercises that I'm currently doing. All right, so that's what you get in this booklet, and this booklet is found on my website, which I will leave a link to in the description below or comment. Okay, so let's get into what we're doing today. Um, first of all, I'll show you the exercise I'm going to do, which is on one, page 110. So just about here. Okay, so I was going to look at this one for this session. It says plot the following functions and determine whether this multivariate limit exists. All right, so the limit as the point x, y goes to the point zero, zero of the function x, sorry, the function f of x and y. Okay, so we've got three functions here and we'll look at this limit. All right, so let's get started and start by plotting plotting the function as instructed. Okay, so I will just write plot 3D. I can see I need to increase the size of the window, sorry, the magnification. Okay, so I've increased the magnification so we can all see plot 3D, and I'm going to enter a fraction, so one thing divided by another thing, and then a plot range, so minus three to three, for example the same for y. All right, now we want to enter x, y squared in the numerator and the sum x squared plus y to the fourth in the denominator. I think that's good to press shift enter now. It looks okay. All right, shift and enter. Let's see what we got. All right, so here we have a function of x and y. Right, so the height is the z value for the f of xy, and you can see based on this um, surface here that it doesn't look like necessarily that all paths lead to zero zero as you get closer to zero zero. So that suggests that maybe the limit doesn't exist at zero zero. Okay, so now that that is plotted, let's go and look at a theorem. All right, so I have a theorem on page 54. So if I type in 54 in the top, well, that's not going to take me there, so I need to go calculus of two variables and just find the right page. Okay, here we are. So here's the theorem, and basically we are trying to show that no limit exists in this example. Okay, so to do so, we let f of x, y be defined on a domain D. If we find that f of x, y goes to a limit L1, 
as xy goes to the point a b along one particular path now this could be the path say y equals zero x equals zero y equals x or it could be a curve okay so you choose a path so if it has one limit l1 along one path and another limit l2 along another path and notice both go to a b these have to be the same all right and l1 is not equal to l2 then the limit as x y goes to a b of f of x y does not exist okay so what we've got to do is choose two paths and show that we get different limits okay so now let's return to page 110 where the problem was okay here we are so now we need to choose two paths for this first one well if it's a simple problem like this then an obvious first choice is something like y equals zero or x equals zero okay so let's uh do that now so let's see i'll copy this Control c come down here and paste it okay now i want to write in comment form what i'm doing all right so i'll choose path c1 is the path let's choose x equals zero okay so we're taking a limit as this goes to zero zero along this path x equals zero now what we do is we essentially substitute in the path first okay so that's step one substitute in the path in this case it's x equals zero all right so i can use replace all to do that x goes to zero all right now i got zero all right now let's just do the same by hand just so you can be convinced all right so what i'm doing is i am replacing all of the x's with zero all right let's see what we have we have y squared over y to the fourth but the numerator is times zero right so the whole thing is equal to zero okay so that's along one path now let's write in our comments section uh, that the limit as y goes to zero is equal to zero okay of course you want to write this properly by hand um, and let me maybe show you how that that should go in in the best way that I can here in the comment form okay so we would write uh lim limit and then under that we have x y going to zero zero of f of x y uh, and now you've got to find a way now sometimes i put it as a superscript over here i'll just put a superscript of c1 all right, but I'll just write in English in this case because I'm doing this in the comment form. So I'll write along C1 is equal to another limit. Okay, so basically because I'm, I'm, I'm using the path X equals zero, so now once I do that, I still need to take the limit as Y goes to zero. All right, and then I can replace the zero in there where the X is and say this is equal to the limit as Y goes to zero of zero, All right? Because when we substitute in X equals zero, we get zero. All right, and then finally this is equal to zero. Okay, now that we've got that, this is our L1 equals zero. Okay, so let's say this is L1. Okay, next we need to choose another path. Okay, so I'll write down another comment. Okay, path. 
let's choose in this case all right now this this is inspired by seeing that this is a fourth power and this is a squared and what i want to do is be able to cancel the same thing in the numerator and denominator all right so that tells me a good choice might be to say let x equal y squared okay so we'll say c2 is the path x equals y squared okay so just as we did before uh, now we want to replace x with y squared Let's see what we get shift enter Okay, we get a one half. Now doing that by hand would give you the same thing. All right, so um, perhaps we should look at that in a little more detail. So looking at this by hand, if I were to substitute in y squared for the x's, I would have a y squared here and a y squared there. All right, now when you simplify that, we have y to the fourth in the numerator, right? y squared times y squared is y to the fourth. And then in the denominator, we have y squared squared is y to the fourth. And then we have an plus another y to the fourth. Well, there are two of those y to the fourths. Okay, and now we see that uh, the y to the fourth would cancel if we were taking a limit. Okay, and that's how we would get one half. Okay, but how should you write that out in English? So we'll just copy some of this stuff. And I'll copy the whole thing and then I'll change things along the way. Okay, so limit. x, y goes to 0, 0 along c2 is equal to the limit as y goes to 0 of f of, now we replace the x with a y squared. Okay, so f of y squared y, right, we're taking a limit as y goes to 0 in this case. Okay, now at this spot we have instead we have one half. All right, now when we take the limit as y goes to zero, we get one half, and this is L2. Okay, now L1 is not equal to L2. Okay, so note, since L1 not equal, to L2, the limit as the point XY goes to the point 0, 0 does not exist. Okay, so that's a proof that it does not exist. Now that completes uh, the first one, A. All right, now in the other cases, I think that perhaps I should leave these to you, but I'll just give you a hint as to which paths you might consider. All right, so I'll note question 11B. C1, you could choose uh, X equals zero. And C2, you could choose y equals x, as in the line y equals x. Okay, and that would allow you to show that the limit of this function f of xy, xy sine of x plus 1 over x squared plus 2, y squared, that does not exist as xy goes to 0, 0. Okay, now why, you might ask, why y equals x? Well, again, this denominator has x squared and y squared, and if you do put y equals x, 
well then you can add these they will be like terms and moreover you can cancel with a new newly arrived at y squared in the denominator sorry in the numerator okay so that will allow the cancellation to happen so you you can choose these um, by carefully looking at the function as in choose the paths all right now the uh the next problem in this collection so a hint for what paths you could choose for 11 c all right so let's choose a c1 as again x x equals zero would work and a c2 y equals zero would work to show that the limit as x y goes to zero zero does not exist okay and i think that's all for now so good luck with these exercises and don't forget uh that you can find this on my website which i'll put a link on below good luck happy new year and i'll see you next time bye for now